Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you. Glad you could join us here for our second final parable, the final five of our series of parables during the week of passion that Jesus taught. Yesterday, we talked about the parable of the two sons. Today, we're going to talk about the parable of the wicked tenants. It's found in Matthew chapter 21 as well. And it begins at verse 33. And it goes like this. Listen to another parable. Jesus said, there was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his own son to them. They will respect my, my son, he said. But when, when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants, Jesus asked. Well, the religious leaders, they, they said, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. So Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this, and it is a mar it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to people. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priest, now hear this, when the chief priest and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, he was talking about them. So what do we see in this parable of the wicked tenants? This is an awesome parable that illustrates two truths, one that's very disturbing and one that is very wonderful. First, the disturbing truth is that which re Matthew records in verse 45. It said, when the religious leaders heard the parable, the Holy Spirit revealed to them Jesus was talking about them. So they got the point of the parable Jesus was talking. We need to understand this story, this parable is about us, about humankind. We were the tenants and God is the landowner. And the disturbing way we have responded to God's provisions for us. He has given us all we need in this life, a vineyard, so to speak, with everything necessary, a protective wall, a wine press for productive work and living, and a watchtower to look for the landowner's servants who would come to check on them. And that includes the son of the landowner. Of course, we know that son is Jesus Christ. So what happened? The tenants rebelled against the landowner and rejecting and killing the landowner's servants, which they represent the Old Testament leaders and prophets, this parable also becomes prophetic as it illustrates the apostles to come, along with the many messengers and missionaries to all the world through history that have come to people like you and I to share God's love and God's provision. And finally, of course, the landowner's son. I told you, it's Jesus himself, who they would crucify in just a couple of days from the time Jesus was telling this parable, just like the tenants who killed the landowner's son. The Pharisees knew it. They were plotting to kill Jesus, and they knew that Jesus was referring to them. Yes, this is a disturbing truth for certain from this parable. For even when Jesus asked them what would the landowner do, the, their, their own answer was that he would deal with them wretchedly. He would, he would take everything from them. And he said, they will bring those wretches to a wretched end and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants. The good news of God's provision would go to others and taken from those who reject God's truth. 
But what about the wonderful truth? I said there was a wonderful truth here. What is that wonderful truth? Here it is. This parable is also about God himself, the landowner. The story is about us, but the story is about God. The truth of God's persistence, that he so loves us, he gave his son for us. Think about it. In this story, what wealthy landowner would send his son alone after so many of his servants were mistreated and killed by these wicked tenants? Nobody in their right mind would send their own son alone to deal with these wicked tenants. But God so loved us that he sent his son for us, to die for us, to take our place. What a wonderful truth indeed that this parable tells us. The parable illustrates the good news of God's whole word, the Old Testament with God's provision for Israel's deliverance and promised land. The message of God's prophets warning of the judgments that would come if we disobey, but the promises of the Messiah who would come. And then the gospel records of Jesus, who is that Messiah, God's only son. And the apostles' writings preparing the church for God, for Christ's return. God's gift of his son and his kingdom will be given to who will believe and be faithful. I encourage you to take this parable and see the disturbing truth and see the wonderful truth. The the disturbing truth about who we are. We are wretched people. We are a people who needs a loving God and his amazing grace. And it's a story about God and his persistence that he keeps coming to us. He keeps sending servants to us to tell us the good news, to remind us of the good news. All that's needed is for us to repent and to believe. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sharing with us both the disturbing truth and the wonderful truth. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the revelation of who we are and what a wretched people we are. We are in need of a Savior. We cannot save ourselves. And we thank you for that wonderful truth that you sent your own Son to be that Savior, to make a way for us to be able to be back in a relationship with you. So Lord, we just thank you for your wonderful truths and we ask you to continue to teach us. And Lord, we desire to be obedient. We desire to be faithful and we desire to come under your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for the final five and parable number two, the parable of the wicked tenants. Hope to see you tomorrow.